All right, what's going on, low coders? I have an awesome video for you today, and it's all about the new Glide API column and action. Now, this has opened up a whole Pandora's box of possibilities. I don't even know if that's the right thing to say, but basically we have a ton of flexibility now and a ton of power that we can extract from Glide and use to our advantage. Now, one of the main use cases that I've wanted for a long time was to be able to create multiple rows at once and delete multiple rows at once. And in this particular case, I'm going to show you how if you are running some sort of project management system, you can add multiple predefined tasks to a new project with the click of a button. And then when you delete that project, instead of having to manually go through and delete all of the associated and linked files or tasks or whatever it is, reminders, notes, it does it all automatically for you when you delete the project every other record associated with that project from any other table is deleted. So it's insanely powerful and I'm going to show you how it works now. So what we have here is basically just um, a blank app where we're adding projects and adding tasks. Now, traditionally what you would do is click to add a project and you can call this uh, example one and we're just going to create that project. Now, traditionally, you would then want to add some to do's to this project. So what you could do is add a to do and you can call this a custom task. You submit and then you've added that to do and you can kind of check it and whatnot. But uh, that's not very quick. <laughs> so what we want to do is the next kind of iteration in making it faster is to add a to do, but have a predefined list of to do's that you can add. So this is slightly faster. It's still not optimal, but it's slightly faster. And so what you can do, if you look to the left, as I click these tasks are being added to this project. Now that is pretty efficient. It's pretty quick. And we can see now that we have all of these tasks set up and they're added to the project and we can go through and check them off as we need. But here's the issue. When we delete this particular uh, project, we want to make sure that any tasks that we also created that are linked to this project are deleted as well. Now, if you just went through, you could go one by one, deleting them here, or you could go onto the back end and manually delete them. But the issue is, if you don't do that, and you just, for example, delete this project, it looks nice and clean. But if you dive into the data, you see that you've got a whole bunch of <laughs> tasks that aren't being used anywhere that are just taking up your row quota. So what you want to do is have some way of deleting every task or every file or every row that's associated with the project you just deleted when you delete the project. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But the first thing is I'm going to show you how to skip the manual addition of tasks and add them automatically. And all we have to do here is do example number two. I'm going to check this box and when I click submit, it's going to automatically add a predefined list of tasks to this project. Now you could customize this list. You could make it segmented into different groups of tasks that you want added, but it's insanely efficient. And then what we want to do is instead of deleting the project and forgetting about all of these or having to go through and manually delete, what we want to do is use a custom action called delete project. And when I click this delete button now, not only is the project going to be deleted, but any associated or linked row is going to be deleted as well. So if we dive into the data, we can see that we have no projects and all of the to do's that were associated that we just created automatically. I've also been deleted. So I'm pretty sure you can see how powerful that is. And now what I'm going to do is I'll add an example project and then I will basically dive into the back end and show you every column that I've used to get this functionality up and running. So let's do it again. And we can say this is example project. We're going to auto generate the to do's. We click submit. It does its magic. And then we have a nice list of to do's that we can check off. So let's go into the data tab and I'll take you through all of the tables. Now, the first table you want to add is going to be the table that 
where uh, a table of like predefined things that you want to automatically add to the project or the the other record. So in this case, it's tasks that I want to automatically be created when I create the project. So what we're going to do is you're going to first add a row ID. And to do that, it's just other row ID. Then we're going to add just a task name. So task slash name. And it's nice to keep everything organized in folders. So anything you put before this forward slash is going to be the folder name. And then we're going to put the, the title here. So we've got a, a list of predefined tasks here. And then what we're going to do is add something called a mutation or a templated mutation. And it sounds complex, but really all it is, is a template column that we have pasted a snippet of what's needed to actually make the API call. So this snippet here is replacing the to do name with the name of the to do this column here. And it's replacing the project ID with the ID of the project that we want to add it to. And I'll show you how that works. This is essentially getting from the user profile row, the ID of a project that we've just created. So I'll show you the action later that that gets that uh, ID and puts it into the user table. So then we can use it throughout the app. But you might be asking, okay, well, where do we get this information? And that's what I'll show you now. So these tasks, we don't want to add these tasks directly to the project, we want to add an iteration or an instance of these tasks to a table called to do's, and then link the project to those to do's. So what we're going to do is if you right click, if you have a pro or a uh, business plan, you can actually access the API. So we want to right click here, click show API, because we're adding to the to do's table, we want to show the API for the to do's table, then we're going to go to curl and add rows. And the, the, the that snippet of code that we're putting into the template, is basically everything from this square bracket to the next square bracket. So we're going to copy this, right? You copy it, you close that, you come in here and you paste it. And then you only need to leave the columns that you want to affect or edit here and you can remove the rest. So you saw in that snippet, there was one extra column that was like the status of the to do. Since we don't need to change the status when we're first adding it, we just leave it. And that's where we're getting this code from. All right. So we have basically the mutation, the snippet of code that we need to add tables or rows to that table. The next table you want to add is basically the register where you're adding all of the instances of the tasks and where you're connecting them to a project. So again, we want to add a row ID. We want to add a simple text field that's going to house the ID of the project that we're going to have. Basically, this is where the name of the predefined task is going to be inserted. Or if it's a custom task, this is where that custom task will be uh, written. This is just a text column as well. Then we're going to add uh, just so we can check the, the task as complete or not. We're going to add a Boolean column. And then just like we did in the tasks table in the to do table, we're going to add a snippet of the mutation that we need to delete this task if we no longer need it. So again, we've got a template column. And in this case, we're replacing the row ID with the row ID of each particular uh, to do. All right. And the way we got that snippet is basically the same as we did before. We're showing the API, we're going to curl, and we're going to delete rows. And then everything within those square brackets, we're copying, pasting into the template column, and then um, replacing this with the actual row ID of the row that we want to delete. Okay, so so far, we've added a task table, and just added three simple columns. We've added a to do's table, which is where we're going to house instances of those tasks and link the task to the project. And we've added basically the mutations that we need to add and delete each particular uh, task or to do. 
Then we want to add a projects um, table. And if you already have this set up, you can just basically follow uh, the, the process. You don't have to actually add these tables. But in the, in the projects table, all we have is a row ID. We have the name of the project. That's pretty straightforward. We have a relation column where we're basically matching the project ID to any to do that has this project ID in that particular column. So that project ID column we added to the to do's table, anywhere where it matches this project's ID, it's going to pull in those records. And we're going to match multiple, right? Because a project can have multiple to do's. Then what we're going to do uh, is basically this is uh, maybe for each project you don't necessarily want to auto create the to do's and that's totally fine and basically this is just a boolean column that you can check or uncheck when you're creating the project that's going to determine whether or not all those to do's are going to be added automatically or you've just got a clean slate that you can work with so we've added these three now we're going to basically all of those mutation columns that we added where it has the templated snippet we're going to make a list of all of those uh, snippets. All right, so if you look here, you can see that these are all of the to-dos to um, separated by a comma. So what we're doing here is basically, we're gonna join the text in the tasks table, and we're not gonna join the row ID or task name or anything like that. We're gonna join together those snippets of code that we created in the template column. So in this case, it's the adding of tasks that we want to kind of consolidate into a list separated by commas. And then what we're going to do is basically, if we look at this call, this API call, you can see that we've only actually used this information in between the square brackets. So now what we want to do is within this data raw section, we basically want to get everything from this little apostrophe or whatever it's called, from the first curly bracket to the last curly bracket, okay? And then we're gonna delete everything inside the two square brackets. So it sounds confusing, but basically, once we paste it, we're gonna delete everything that's inside those two square brackets and we're going to replace it with that list of that joined list of the mutations that we want right because if we just pasted it it would only be affecting one row we want to affect multiple which is why instead of um just putting one basically we're going to put a whole bunch of them here so we're getting this list of mutations and then we're putting it into basically the body of the request that we're gonna send off. And that's the add to-dos part of it done. And we repeat the same process for the deleting of the to-dos, except this time, instead of getting it from the tasks, we actually wanna get the code from this project's related to-dos, the mutations, and the delete snippet, right? So this is all those little snippets of code and we're basically just gonna join them together separated by a comma and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get that raw data. We're gonna copy it and paste it here and then in between the two square brackets, we're gonna delete everything and we're gonna replace the word mutations here with that joined list of mutations that we want to take place. So we've got these two these two and that's all you need to do the only thing you need to do now is just add a text column to your user table and this is just going to allow the api call to know when it's adding tasks for example which project should it add these tasks to so this id here is going to be used here so we can create this relation here of to do's so We've covered all the tables now. Let's jump into the uh, actual interface, and I'll uh, interface, and I'll show you how it's uh, how it's done. Right. So let's go back here. Now, when we've got a project and we're clicking this add button, we can add the project name, example project two, 
and we can check or uncheck since this is just a form this button is just opening a form and we're submitting to the projects table basically this checkbox right is just checking and unchecking that auto generate so if auto generate is tech is checked then it's going to auto generate and if it's left unchecked then it's not going to add any to do's and so what we want to do is basically configure what happens when we submit this and the way we do that is by on submit we're going to create a custom action so let's jump into that action now you can see here if auto generate is checked then show the show the detail screen of the project we've just created then set a column value for the user profile row and you want to set that project ID of the project you've just created as the ID of the project you're selecting. So that's all you need to do there. And this is just using this column here. So we're adding the ID of the project we just created to our user row. And then we're going to call API, right? And this is just an integration. If you scroll down, you'll see generic API, call API. So we're going to call the API and we're going to set the endpoint and the way you get this endpoint is basically um, I can show you now actually just to make it comprehensive the way you get the endpoint is you go to curl you go to whatever the action is add rows in this case and you're going to get this URL and that's going to be the endpoint okay and then there are some headers that we need to set we need to set the content type and we need to set the authorization okay so we jump back into the actions um, and I can show you here so we jump back here so we're setting that URL here the method is going to be post you might have seen it from the API uh, before we're going to set the content type as application slash JSON and the authorization is going to be the word bearer space and then you're going to copy the secret token basically I can't show you now but you'll copy that secret token and paste it after then in this case what we want to do is add to do's so we're going to select from the project table we're going to select that body of the request that we created earlier as the body of this particular call and then in this case we don't actually need to log the response anywhere so we can leave it blank now if we hadn't checked the auto generate it'll just show the screen for the for the project you just created so let's give it a go and we click submit now it's done that what we're asked for it sent the the API call and it's added all of these to do's and you can see on the back end we've got all of these to do's for both projects now now the last thing is how do you delete multiple rows at once and it's essentially the same process, right? If we were looking at traditionally before this, this delete button, right? Instead of just deleting uh, the row, we're going to do a custom action. And I'll show you what that action looks like. It's very similar. All we're going to do is call the API before we delete the item. We're going to call the API. And then we're going to, this is all the same, but instead of selecting add to do's we're going to select delete to do's as the body of this request and we don't need a response here and then once it's deleted all of the to do's then we're going to delete the row itself <clears throat> excuse me my voice is breaking so when we click this it's going to delete all of the to do's associated with each project and this is just insanely powerful and saves you a lot of rows, right? Saves you a lot of data. So before my voice runs out, if you wanna learn more, join Low Code School. I'll show you how to do this. I'll show you how to do more. We're all helping each other level up and I hope to see you in there. Cheers.